So apparently it is no longer okay to say that women exist. And this is true even if you are a down-the-line, incredible, crazy lib. It, it doesn't seem to matter. So the latest example comes courtesy of Politico. Politico has an entire article titled The Metamorphosis of J.K. Rowling when it comes to trans rights. Some fans believe the Harry Potter author is more Death Eater than Dumbledore. She's evil. She noted that women exist, and you're not allowed to do that sort of thing. That's bad. When it comes to J.K. Rowling, says Sarah Wheaton of Politico, even some of the children author's biggest fans are finding it increasingly necessary to separate the work from the creator. Join the Potter Trail walking tour in her adopted hometown of Edinburgh, and you'll learn that Rowling wrote much of the first Harry Potter novel at Nicholson's Cafe. The establishment was co-owned by her brother-in-law, so as a broke, recently divorced single mom, she could nurse cheap espresso all day without guilt for taking up a table. You'll also be told how, as a best-selling author, 12 years later, Rowling treated herself to exclusive at luxury while finishing her last novel at a suite in the five-star Balmoral Hotel just half a mile up the road. On a cold, blustery Wednesday in February, a Potter trail guide named Alex recounted how Rowling downed a bottle of champagne by herself to celebrate the triumphant moment because she's a legend. The tour is free, but Wizarding fans are encouraged to provide an optional donation. A proportion goes to the Scottish Trans Alliance, an activist group promoting rights for transgender people. Many of you may be aware of J.K. Rowling's recent tweets concerning transgender issues, reads an explanation on the tour group's website. It's a difficult time to be a Harry Potter fan for many, but we sincerely wish J.K. Rowling's views not to diminish our appreciation of the books and their messages of inclusion and tolerance. So um, my daughter, who is eight, really likes the Harry Potter books. She also understands that girls and boys exist because she's not an idiot. I played a little game with my two-year-old daughter yesterday. It was called Girl and Boy, and here's how it worked because she started the game. She would point to a person in the crowd where we were and she would say, girl or boy. She was right 100% of the time because she is not, again, an idiot. And yet we are supposed to believe that in order for you to properly read Harry Potter, you have to disown J.K. Rowling for the crime of noticing that boys and girls exist. Absolute insanity, of course. Politico laments all of this. Say, if anything, as the criticism has mounted, Rowling has only become more combative, cheerfully retweeting her detractors to trigger pylons from fellow thinkers. She's bad because she's noticing people are mean to her. What's more, when it comes to driving the debate, she seems to be winning. Asked earlier this year by an anonymous poster whether her battle was a hill she wanted her legacy to die on, she answered tartly, yes, sweetheart, I'm staying right here on this hill defending the right of women and girls to talk about themselves, their bodies, and their lives in any way they damn well please. You worry about your legacy, I'll worry about mine. She is correct, but this means that she is very, very bad. And this means that Politico has to run a full several thousand word piece about how bad she is how she's going to get trans people killed for noticing that women exist. By the way, speaking of this, my friend Dave Rubin was just suspended from Twitter for mentioning that Jordan Peterson had been suspended from Twitter for mentioning that Ellen Page is actually a woman who is now called Elliot Page and the media say is a man. You're not allowed to mention any of that, apparently. That's, that's, that's very, very bad. So apparently people in the Democratic Party are now worried that, that Joe Biden doesn't have a handle on this economy. Maybe the dead giveaway is that he's now tweeting at gas stations. Not kidding. That is a thing that he is doing. So he tweeted over the weekend, July 2nd, quote, my message to the companies running gas stations and setting prices at the pump is simple. This is a time of war and global peril. Bring down the price you are charging at the pump to reflect the cost you're paying for the product and do it now. Um, well, no, because we have to invest that money because you've prevented future investment. I like that Joe Biden says that if he just yells at He's an old man standing outside a gas station yelling at it. That's the president of the United States now. He's just yelling at things. It's too hot outside. I'm looking at the sun. You, you sun. Come on, man, Jack. You pony dog, pony boy. Sun, too hot outside. Stop that shining. Stop that right now. And similarly shimmer to that. Joe Biden, by the way, is so with it that... Um, Again, on July 4th, he finished a speech, did not know where to go, and was played off by the band while he wandered around aimlessly with his shirt unbuttoned down to his navel. Apparently, this is a thing now. So, Joseph R. McBiden is really blowing it out here at age 98. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks. I just met your son. Still talking to people and... Uh, the band comes in. <laughs> Joe, you need to leave. Where do I go now? I don't know. Uh, where's the nurse? Oh, she's out. Uh, um, who are you? Where am I? Why am I? Things are going great for the Democrats. According to Politico, 
President Joe Biden says there's nothing inevitable about a recession in the U.S. He's an increasingly lonely voice about that prospect. From Wall Street to Washington, whispers about a coming economic slump have risen to nearly a roar as the Federal Reserve ramps up its battle against the highest inflation in four decades. Price spikes and the Fed's aggressive interest rate hikes sent the benchmark S&P 500 stock index tumbling to its worst performance in the first half of the year since 1970. So things are going fantastically. Consumer confidence has sunk to record lows. Economists are increasingly worried a downturn will not only happen, but happen soon. A danger underscored by one widely watched Fed growth tracker. Fed Chair Jerome Powell has begun saying the quiet part out loud. The central bank is willing to tolerate a recession if it means getting inflation under control. He said the bigger mistake to make would be to fail to restore price stability. While Biden has publicly backed Powell's efforts, raising expectations of recession are compounding the administration's economic woes as Democrats head into a congressional election this year. Everyone is screaming about inflation, said Josh Bivens, research director at the left-leaning Economic Policy Institute. But people would really hate a recession too. Yes, it turns out we don't like either of those things. Inflations and recessions, both are bad. Americans are already pessimistic about the economy, even as unemployment sits at 3.6%, and a contracting economy would deepen the pain, bringing a wave of layoffs and pay cuts. The mood could get a lot more sour, said Bivens, who argues that if the economy contracts, that would mean the Fed has screwed up by going too far and trying to curb surging prices. Across the nation, the leading topic of economic conversation, high inflation, is swiftly morphing into growing certainty of a coming recession. White House allies are bracing for it. Republican lawmakers are trumpeting that a downturn is inescapable. Wall Street analysts are increasingly building it into their forecast. Business leaders have rapidly moved from muted fears to openly chattering about an economic slump during investor discussions and inside their companies. Some Democrats, for their part, are still pointing to bright spots in the economy, hoping the central bank will manage to slow growth without tipping the, the country into a full-blown slump. Representative Jim Himes of Connecticut Democrats said, quote, a recession would be really problematic. Boy, are we ever a long way from a recession, though? Well, I mean, we might be in one right now. We have one quarter of negative growth. According to Michael Faroli, the chief U.S. economist at J.P. Morgan Chase, he said a downturn could start even as soon as this quarter, with recent data showing that consumer spending is beginning to slow. Things are looking like we're losing altitude pretty quickly, he said. The government confirmed last week the economy shrank in the first three months of the year. Atlanta Fed's economic growth tracker is pointing to increased chances of a second quarter contraction, which would be an official recession because recessions are two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. So we might already be in one, as I've been saying for literally months at this point. Charles Calamiris, a Columbia Business School professor who served as chief economist at a bank regulatory agency under former President Trump, warned that if the Fed caused more pain than investors are currently baking in, it could cause a serious recession. The best way the Fed can prevent the public from expecting persistently surging prices is if it shows it's willing to have a real recession until inflation gets tamed. But of course, Joe Biden is freaking out about this, and so he's yelling at the gas companies, which leads the Wall Street Journal editorial board to point out that what Joe Biden is doing makes no sense. It's embarrassing, says the Wall Street Journal, for the leader of the free world to sound like he's channeling Hugo Chavez. A Chinese state media flack praised Mr. Biden's tweet, quote, now U.S. president finally realized capitalism is about exploitation. He didn't believe this before. Or maybe he didn't. Nobody wanted to believe it. You'd think the president's Ivy League educated economic advisors would have informed him that large refiners own fewer than 5% of all gas stations in America. More than 60% are operated by an individual or family that owns a single store. The rest are independently owned chains or grocery stores that sell fuel. Many licensed brands from retail refiners. Refiners largely exited the retail business in the 2000s because of thin profit margins. The Energy Information Administration says distribution and marketing made up about 5% of the price of gasoline in May, about 22 cents a gallon. This covers the cost of freight, labor, utilities, real estate, and credit card fees. Most gas stations make a few cents in a gallon in profit and stay in business mainly by selling food and cigarettes. The National Association of Convenience Stores says its members are struggling amid high gas prices because customers are making fewer stops and buying less. More than a quarter of gas stations have closed since the 90s because they couldn't make the economics work. If retailers were to sell fuel at cost, most would go out of business. Perhaps those owned by the large refiners would survive, but then they'd be accused of predatory pricing by Biden's antitrust cops. Asked about the tweet on Fox News Sunday, National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said, quote, anybody that knows President Biden knows he's plain spoken and he tells exactly what he's thinking in terms that everyone can understand. Adding, quote, we obviously take great exceptions to the idea this is somehow misdirection. This, as the Wall Street Journal notes, is not reassuring. Yes, it turns out he doesn't know what he's doing. Shocker. Who could have foreseen such a thing except everyone who has watched Joe Biden for five minutes? I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Ben Shapiro Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all our future content.